Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody, we were looking at this simple example where we had a, a heat source in a pipe uh, which was located at some location and we looked at the heat source having an unsteady fluctuation and we modeled the un unsteady fluctuation in terms of the velocity fluctuations using the so called Crocos Entau model, this is a very famous classical model and then we try to find the stability of the system. So, uh, just to uh, recap, uh, this is the pipe with length L and yes, uh, please ask me, okay. there is a pipe with length L and somewhere in the pipe we have uh, in the duct we have kept uh, a heat source. So, there is a flame holder and a flame is there uh, and uh, you have a region 1 and region 2, region 1 is cold, region 2 is hot and uh, we, they have they can have different temperatures and it is a premixed fuel and they are coming here burning right here and coming out. So, we have a, a closed end here and an open end here and we wrote the solution in terms of this A and B, the left running and right running wave on the left side and the left running right, left running wave and the right running wave on the right side and what we did was to apply a boundary condition here that velocity is 0, applied the boundary condition that pressure is 0 here. This is the same as same manner in which we did a quarter wave tube. But then we did something extra that is at this uh, flame we applied the jump condition that, that is pressure is continuous, but velocity jumps and then we got 4 equations in 4 unknowns, uh, no sorry in 5 unknowns, we got 4 equations in 5 unknowns and the uh, we discussed why this is okay, why was that, anybody remember? Yeah, so one is the omega itself we are solving for, so we have eigenvalue problem and get a dispersion relation to solve for eigenvalue that is fine. And then we get the amplitudes we have, then we are left with 4 coefficients and 3 equations. So, why is that okay? Yeah, we are having a linear problem, so we cannot really solve for the amplitude. Uh, all we can get is we have 4 wave amplitudes, we can get 3 in terms of another one or something like that. Uh, and then uh, if you if you put the determinant of this matrix to be 0, we can actually get the relation for the omega which is complex and the real part indicates the periodic quantity and the imaginary part indicates the growth rate or decay. And we had a relationship of the form multiplied by 1 plus n equal. I hope you check this at home, uh, I check my calculation again, it seems right. And, uh, now, in McManus uh, paper, there is a slight difference, anybody notice the difference? Uh, there he uses e power minus i omega t, I am using e power i omega t, I generally like it that way for no reason, you can do whichever way you like and therefore, some of the in between results would be different. So, after this we made a bunch of approximations, this equation can be solved uh, numerically, but we wanted to get some relationship analytically, so that we can see and feel pleased about the relationship and then we can look at the equation, smile at the relations and understand some things, but then you have to do lot of simplifications. So, we made the simplifications that rho 1 equal to rho 2 c 1 equal to c 2 and so on. That means, we are kind of assuming average temperature in the duct which is constant and uh, then we get a solution of the form. So, K 1 equal to K 2 equal to K and uh, we are also assuming that uh, uh, the duct is, the flame is at the middle of the duct, then things really become simple. So, A will be equal to L over 2 if the flame is at the middle of the duct. It is not like the flame has to be kept in the middle of the duct, you can keep it anywhere, we can get simple answer 
because the trigono trigonometric functions can be uh, simplified easily. And uh, so we derived this relation. I hope you checked it. Uh, I think this is okay. And when n is much less than 1, we can get cos 2 k so this is quite simple that we can now play with it so the idea is assuming that we know n and tau what should we calculate oh my God. and in that we we have two parts one is the periodic part the frequency and one is the growth rate that's our objective and if you are having growth rate we say it is unstable, if you are having a decay rate we say it is stable. So, we can uh, do this in uh, two steps, uh, this is again similar to one of the problems we did earlier where I looked at a small admittance and then I compared it with a open open tube or something like that, that was a problem we did. So, it is similar to this. So, uh, first let us study the case uh, without combustion. So, if you have a general result then we should be able to derive our earlier known results from it right. So, let us say n equal to 0, this would mean no heat release, no oscillatory heat release. Now, I must say that when the temperature jump is 4, you can also get a closed form solution and I would give it as a homework to work it out. Okay. So, now n equal to 0 would mean no oscillatory heat release. So, what will happen to this relationship? Cos of 2 k equal to 0, what would that mean? 2 k is equal to cos of what? Pi by 2 is 0, then 3 pi by 2 is 0, and so on. Pi by 2, 3 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2 etcetera. We look at the fundamental and uh, let us see k is. So, let us call this as k naught because we correspond to n equal to 0. So, 2 times omega naught over c a which is 2 f naught over c into a equal to pi over 2 which will mean f naught equal to let us cancel this pi this is 4 is this ok Should you have 4 or 8 here? It is 8 because 2a uh, is L, so we can rewrite it as 3 by 4L. So the other ones you can get it as uh, corresponding to 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, will you will get uh, 3c by 4L, 5c by 4L, and so on. So, Just check to ensure. So, if you have this real omega or real frequency, what happens to the growth rate? There is no growth rate or decay rate. But let us say in the presence of combustion, we have a departure from the solution and we express the express the new solution in terms of the solution, then maybe uh, things may be easier. So, so it is a k equal to k naught plus k prime in the presence of oscillatory heat release rate. And we say that n is very small and k prime is very small. So, so 
So, now we can expand the solution uh, because of this can be written as cos 2 k naught cos 2 k prime a minus sin Now, can you simplify it any further? So, cos 2 k naught a would be 0, right. That would be the case when there is no heat release, and we are expanding around that. So, we can uh, drop this term, and what will happen to this term? Oh, perfect. So, we, we would have this thing as just uh, a minus one. Yeah, I am doing first mode. Okay, not. Uh, I mean, pi by, like, if you have look for three pi by two, you'll get f one. Uh, f two will be phi c by four r, and we can work out. I'll give the um, uh, three quarter mode as a homework. I'll work out quarter mode, and we'll give the three quarter mode as homework. But what about the sign? You said minus. This is okay. So, uh, sign if k prime a is very small we can even call it sin theta as theta so so this would be minus k prime a you can actually do without all these approximations no problem but with the approximation you can get some simple results which you may appreciate that's the idea at least i appreciate so if you look at this So, if you expand this, this will be, we had this relation for k as cos 2 k equal to half n e power minus i omega tau. Again, this is for the case of n is really, n being really small. This is half cos i omega tau minus i sin omega tau. So, when you have a complex equation, you actually have two equations, one for the real part, one for the imaginary part. <coughs> so, we can say k prime real is minus 1 over 4 n over a cos omega naught tau and uh, Hope I have the signs correctly. Please let me know if I made a mistake in the signs. Signs are quite critical. Otherwise, if there is a sign change, what you calculate as growth rate will be actually decay rate. So this k prime is actually a departure of the wave number from uh, this uh, natural modes. The wave number corresponding to natural modes. Okay, and we are saying that the departure is small. So now the natural mode has no growth rate or de decay rate. It, it's zero. Uh, so, if you look at the k prime imaginary, from that we should be able to tell if there is growth or not, right. So, what are the conditions for the instability to occur? That is what we are interested in. So, 
because if I write this equation which I wrote n number which I wrote so many times i omega real time i omega imaginary t this is equal to e power i omega real t times e power minus omega imaginary t. So, if omega imaginary is negative we will have growth right. So, instabilities to occur we need omega imaginary to be negative. So, this is the condition for instabilities to occur so, that is good so, that is our main result. which would mean n over 4 a sin omega naught tau should be less than 0 or sin omega naught tau itself should be less than 0. That would mean that <coughs> minus pi less than omega naught this would be the quadrant in which a sign is uh, pos positive from 0 to 180 degree from 180 degree to 360 degree sign is negative. So, that is what I have written, but there is always the ambiguity of some uh, 2 j pi or something like that of 2 pi or 4 pi or 6 pi. I can rewrite omega in terms of time period, so that you can get a ratio of tau over t. So, you can multiply by tau naught and remove 2 pi you will get this would be the condition you would get for instability. So, for certain time delay within this which satisfies this relation uh, if this occurs you can have the fundamental mode to be driven the, the quarter wave mode to be driven. So, it does not have to be that delay has to be small the delay can be more than a period and then it can come in a range where it will drive that is also possible okay. and delays need not be short also. So, this is the this is the condition for instability and if your delay is outside this range if it does not satisfy this inequality then you actually have decay or it would not be driving. Now, the actual see we have not included damping in our model as was pointed out in last class. So, the actual uh, regime will be smaller where you get instability because damping always uh, helps to, to make the thing stable the system stable. So, your stability regime will be uh, instability regime will be smaller and if the damping is really a lot there will be no instability at all. So, the next question I would have is so, we derived some condition for, condition for stability, but we also earlier mentioned uh, derived something on the energy uh, like a new energy corollary which had a term which uh, <coughs> which can be driving or damping depending on the phase between heat release and pressure and so on. So, uh, and this criteria this was called Rayleigh criteria according to that if the uh, heat release rate was in phase with the acoustic pressure we said we are going to have driving and if it was out of phase with the pressure we were going to have uh, damping. So, Rayleigh criteria is often used to uh, Rayleigh criteria is often used to uh, quantify or, or uh, to look at combustion stability studies and we actually 
uh, used this to quantify the coupling between heat release and the acoustic pressure fields <coughs> or unsteady heat release and the uh, acoustic pressure fields. And the criteria says that if the heat release rate is in phase with the pressure, the acoustic field will be amplified. Now, we can imagine that the heat release rate may happen over a finite zone, we did have a lot of discussions on this earlier. So, in that case we look at, we do not look at it as an integral thing, at each point you will have a different pressure, you can have a different heat release rate, but if the heat release rate is locally in phase, then at that point the wave is being amplified, at some other point it may be out of phase, it may be decaying. So, the net effect is what drives the system or damps the system, but locally it can vary. So, uh, people define something called Rayleigh index which is used to quantify the uh, coupling between acoustic wave and the uh, combustion process and it is a local thing. here is the time period of the oscillation. So, if g of x, I mean having this x dependency says that it is a local thing, it acknowledges the fact that some place heat release can be in phase, some other place it can be out of phase. So, if g of x is greater than 0, we say local amplification and g of x is less than 0, we say local uh, absorption or decay, or local damping let us say. So, we saw that if you look at the specific frequency, we have to have phi between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. I hope it is clear how we got it, right. Should I do it again? I cannot read the expression. Okay. So, we have a p prime as cos omega t q prime as q hat cos omega t plus phi. So, our g would be 1 over t integral 0 to t p prime q prime cos omega t times cos omega t plus phi. This we can use a trigonometric identity and say cos a plus b would be cos 2 omega t plus phi plus cos a minus b would be cos phi divided by 2 d t and this is a periodic quantity. So, that will drop and you will have only this. So, this will say phi hat q hat and the t will cancel. So, over 2 cos phi. So, if cos phi is uh, positive, you will have driving, acoustic driving. Uh, if cos phi is negative, you will have damping. So, positive phi will come when, uh, so this is, so it depends on the sign of this. Uh, so, cos phi is greater than 0 implies phi is like minus 90 or pi by 2 less than phi less than pi by 2 plus so minus uncertainty of 2 pi or uh, n times 2 pi with well, I cannot use n, n is already in the interaction j times 2 pi uh, or j times 360 degree. So, we have to see if this criteria is consistent with whatever we got for our growth rate and decay rate that is the idea. So, we, we can check for consistency or correctness of the criteria that we derive is that okay. So, uh, 
we cannot do it straight away because what we have is a relationship for key release in terms of velocity. But uh, that's not it's not the phase. Rayleigh didn't say that the it is the phase between heat release and velocity that is mattering. He said it's the heat release between is it's the phase between the heat release rate and the acoustic pressure. So that means you have to find the phase between pressure and velocity, which depends on the local acoustics. Okay, what is the quantity which indicates the phase between pressure and or what what are the factors that affect? Let's go back to it's a very good question. So we'll answer this based on try to look at a, a recall what we did for this admittance and so on. So when you have a, a perfect example like a closed, closed and open, open end, we we got always the phase difference between pressure and velocity as 90 degree pi by 2. But if you have a left turning wave and right turning wave, you always got it as 0 degree or 90 degree, right. One case it is uh, in, for the right turning wave pressure was p prime over rho, rho c for the left turning wave it was minus p prime by rho c. So, if you have a traveling wave then you would not get uh, 90 degree at all because it is energy flow. So, there will be admittance and admittance times p prime squared shows the power flow. Admittance times p prime squared times area shows the power. So, as long as the power is flowing then you would not get 90 degree and you will have uh, uh, one or something in between and, and so on. So, and the direction depends on which direction the power is flowing. So, yeah I mean you will not it is not necessary that you have it at all 90 degree, but except in the case of a perfect terminations then it is possible like completely open or completely closed kind of terminations is that clear. Yeah, so this is what this is the local acoustics which decides the phase between heat release and the velocity ok. It, it is the acoustic field in the duct and it, so it critically depends on. So, that, that gives the idea that for example, if I found system to be unstable for a given boundary conditions I can alter the boundary condition and the same with the same tau time delay and all that the system may become stable which is actually the principle for active control which we will see soon ok. So, if, if you can if you can some way adjust the phase between pressure and velocity then I think we can um, solve the problem make any system stable which is the clue towards uh, 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 this uh, active control or anti sound and so on okay. very good question. Any other questions ok. So, so we need to look at the expression for pressure and velocity at x equal to a which is the place where the flame is right. So, what was this? So, what is the value from our did not come to last class. So, this is the pressure at um, this location. Now, what we need is uh, heat release rate which depends on the velocity at this location, but delayed by time tau ok. So, what will be n times it will be right the rho c and all will get cancelled with those factors with n ok. It is I, I will just say proportional there is some constant there the gamma minus 1 factors there. So, I strictly say proportional and u is this ok. So, we put the n and time delay tau is like e power minus i omega tau that is ok right. So, we need a relation between a and b so, that is that is the only thing that is stopping us from calculating the phase between p prime and q prime. So, we are saying that the solution is a small departure from the quarter wave tube. So, we can use the quarter wave frequency into the boundary condition and see we will we'll get an approximate relationship between a and b and then we will plug that in here. So, uh, our relationship was cos u k naught a equal to 0 or k naught a equal to pi over 4. So, so 
this was the boundary condition at x equal to 0 right velocity is 0. So, what we will do we can use anything, but we need a relation between a and b. So, we it is good to have a relation with, with which we have just a and b. So, this can be written as a into cos pi by 4 minus i sin pi by 4 minus b into cos pi by 4 plus i sin pi by 4 equal to 0. So, a times 1 over root 2 minus i over root 2 equal to b times or a over b equal to 1 plus i by 1 minus i. If I multiply top and bottom by 1 plus i equal to bottom will be is 1 minus i. So, it will be 2 right and this would be 1 plus i square plus 2 i and this will go. So, I will get i minus i sorry a e power minus k a ah, yeah this, this is e e power minus i k a sorry mister and that is what translates to is minus i so we can see p at x equal to 0 comma t is we can substitute for a as b i. So, a equals b i. So, you will get 1 plus i times b and i omega t. Q prime goes like, so there will be some constant, some factor of gamma minus 1, I will not write that. L times i minus 1 b e power i omega and t minus tau should a as i b and we can get this. So, let us rewrite this as n times i minus 1. So, we have to get the same factor here only then we can write the phase here uh, as the direct value. e power minus i pi over 2 is cos pi by 2 minus i sin pi by 2 which is minus i. So, if this will be like multiply equal to equal multiplying by minus i. So, i minus 1 times i would be plus i. So, we can write this as this is equal to n into 1 plus i times b times e power i omega t minus tau plus i pi over 2. So, you have here is the expression for pressure and here is the expression for So, the phase is minus omega tau plus I So, this should be between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2.
or plus 2 j pi here. So, this would give what would give? pi plus 2 j minus n minus is this ok. So, <coughs> so, this if I multiply by minus 1 the signs will swap. So, this should give I can write omega as 2 pi f over t sorry 2 pi over t and if I divide throughout by 2 pi I will get So, in, in reality there will be multiple okay, L pass. Okay, in reality it is possible that the multiple modes can be present you do not know which one will come and you can also have the uh, individually you can have the uh, it did not you need not get the fundamental mode you can get the three quarter mode as somebody pointed out. So, the uh, uh, next thing is uh, we, we can actually uh, uh, analyze that also. So, if you look at the next mode so you will get 2 k 1 a equal to 0 which will give k 1 a equal to 3 pi over 4 and this would eventually get you get lambda equal to 8 a over 3 or 4 a over 3 or l is like 3 lambda over 4. So, this is the three quarter mode. So, the homework is to determine the stability of the three quarter mode. So, if you do this problem and look at the region of stability and you will find that there is a problem because one would wish the time delays that create instability in the suppose you have instability in the first mode and then you change the time delay to something else. And there is actually a region <coughs> where the first mode is stable, but the second mode is unstable. So, you do something and make the first mode stable and you have altered the time delay. <coughs> So, now the first mode is quiet, but the second mode may come up and this is very similar to a life when we solve one problem whatever we did to solve that problem will create a, a new problem. So, I think it is like if I have to do I have to have a living I borrow money from the, from the bank and do business, but then eventually the bank takes away all my stuff because I cannot pay back the bank or something like that. So, 
you, you do something to uh, bad example you do something to uh, uh, eliminate one problem but then that very thing creates another problem so that that's quite possible there's a overlap of uh, 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 or overlap region where you have there's a possibility that the first uh, first mode can be stable but then you make the second mode unstable and and then there's even more complicated things which will come to but what is interesting is now if you go back to this and everything dependent on the phase that is coming out because of the relationship between a and b and we got a was b i and this critically affected the phase. So, can we do something to alter this end condition? So, instead of having a hard wall, can we put a loudspeaker there and adjust the phase between pressure and velocity such that you can actually uh, uh, make the system stable. So, you alter the stability conditions and at, at whatever condition you want to operate, you want to make it stable. So, that is the basis of active control. We will look at that in the uh, next class, but what it involves is we have to put some loudspeaker and what phase should you put we do not know right. So, we have to measure the acoustic field from the mi using a microphone whatever is the uh, acoustic pressure some place and then you have to find the appropriate phase that you have to put for the uh, or the appropriate boundary condition you have to put. So, that the acoustic field dies down. So, this is the principle for active control you might have some of you may have both speakers would know how it cancels the sound. So, the in uh, uh, what it involves is so in the combustor you put a piece of transducer piece electric transducer or a microphone measure the sound then amplify it and appropriately phase shift it and use a actuator which can be a simple actuator is a loudspeaker or a piston complicated actuator can be a secondary fuel injection or, or mass addition or something like that. And then in the end you want to try to drive the system to stability. So, we will look at that in the next class. So, in summary given a uh, given a heat release model we can calculate whether you have whether you have stable system or unstable system. Now, how to derive this n and how to derive the tau that is the crux of the modeling of the unsteady heat release rate that that we are not addressed we said that it is a uh, given thing. And uh, in reality your model may be much more complicated than that there may be other unsteady process such as, such as hydrodynamic instabilities and under that you may not get the uh, rust and frequency of the pipe as the or you may not get close to the rust and frequency of the pipe and the actual system may be highly nonlinear and we will have to account for all that. But nevertheless it is like the professor looking under the lamp post for the ring. So, you looked somewhere and found a solution tractable solution that was the objective and it illustrated something that is there is some time delays under which you can get stability and so on. So, stop here. <laughs>